Okay, vectors here. We've got perpendicular lines, parallel lines, intersecting lines, lots going on. Let's get started. What we have is L1. We need to find L2. And just a quick picture here. L1, we're told that L2 is parallel. And importantly, we have these things. That first Vector is what's called a position vector. That gets me onto the line. And then I have a second vector, which is called the direction vector, which tracks me along the line. And if I've got a L2, which is parallel, what they've got in common is the direction. What they don't have in common is the position. So I need a new position vector and the same direction vector. New position vector, that's why I've been given this one, so we go to minus 8, minus 5, 25. And then we use multiples of the same old direction vector that we had before because things are parallel. And that's our L2. Position vectors, vectors crucial if we're going to deal with lines. A third line, perpendicular. Very important, this point here, the word perpendicular. If you see the word perpendicular in a vector's question, then what is, what is being said here is that the dot or the scalar product equals zero. The question is between which two vectors. Now, if we have got two lines that are perpendicular, then the things that will be dot product zero are the direction vectors, not the position vectors. Points on the line are nothing to do with it. The direction of the line is what tells us whether they're perpendicular or not. And therefore what we do is we look at the direction vectors. This one and this one. And we say dot product equals zero. In saying that, dot product 2 times minus 7 plus 1 times minus 2 plus minus 8 times k equals 0. k equals minus 2 as needed. So perpendicular dot product equals 0, a very important vector result. Intersecting lines. Now, this always takes a bit of time. It's not difficult. Well, it's not difficult if you know what you're doing, but that's often the case. But it does take a little bit of work. What we've got to do, if we want lines to intersect, we pull out the x, y, z points and we compare them. Looking at the first one, L1, the x point minus 3 plus 2p. Let me write these down. The y point minus 1 plus p and the z point minus 25 minus 8p and those will all match the next line because they intersect of course Simultaneous equations, more than we need. We've got three equations, but only two unknowns. So I just pick two of them. I think I'm going to use this one and this one. I'll just rewrite them a little bit more tidily. So this first one. And this second one. And then I think I will subtract p minus minus 8p, 2q minus gone, 1 minus 28 minus 27. There we go, p equals minus 3. And if I take p equals minus 3, I can go back to any of these. I'll go back to this one because it's nice and easy. 
p equals minus 3, 2q equals 4, q equals 2. Taking either of these, I only really need one of them, I can go back to either this one or this one and find the point. So if I take, let me say, the p equals minus 3 and I go back to this one here, p equals minus 3, minus 9, minus 4, and minus 1. And just as a check, if I take q equals 2 on this one, One and it's all working nicely. So we've got our coordinates of a minus nine, minus four, minus one, and that's the intersection. Match up the points, simultaneous equation, and we've got our points. Right. Let me um, let me go back. I just lost a bit of my just lost a bit of my problem there. Finally. I'm going to need a picture for this last bit, I think. For this last bit, what I've got, let me just put all this together. I had L1, I had L2, and I had L3 that crossed them, and it was perpendicular. Points that I've got, that was point A. I'm told this is point C. Point B, all I know about point B is it's somewhere on L2. And they've given me B to C to work with. Before I do anything else, what I've got to do is I've got to find A to B. And the best way to find A to B is to write down point A. Write down point B. And then the difference will get you between them. So to go from A to B, minus 9 to minus 8, do a subtraction. Minus 8, minus minus 9, minus 5, minus minus 4, and 25, minus minus 1. That's my A to B. Finally, modulus of a to c. Well, before I need the before I get the modulus, I need to know what a to c is. Best way to get from a to c would be to go from a to b, and then go from b to c, simply because I know those two things. So, a to b. plus b to c, and I'm given that. And put all that together. And the modulus. Well, I thought I was going to just manage to do this without running out of room, but I haven't quite managed that. Shrink that down. And modulus is a little bit of Pythagoras going on. Square, 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 add it all and square root. Looks like the square root of 57 is the distance, and I could Put then my calculator round if I want, but I'm going to leave it at square root of 57. That is the distance from A to C, and I think finally that's my question done.